Hello, hello everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Alexey Romnenko. I work for Talent, uh, and uh, it happens that I uh, contributed to a bunch of different I/O connectors and Beam. So that is why I decided to share some knowledge about that today. Well, uh, in tw 20 minutes, I will try to give you kind of your crash course uh, so it's just basics and uh, we'll start from introduction about BMIO what actually it is and uh, why probably you would like to develop another IO connector and then uh, there's a little bit about structure of IO connector and beam so be ready to uh, for some Java code and then I'll give you some recommendation about writing your connector general things uh, and finally, briefly about uh, IO testing. Uh, okay. So actually, where we are with IO? Uh, in a Beam code base, we can say that we have a kind of four layers of uh, code. So there's a, one of the layer is a runner, which is responsible to work with the backend data processing system like Spark, Flink, Google Dataflow, and others. So another one like SDK, which provides you the API to using your favorite language. And uh, then on top of that, we have a bunch of already implemented Beam, different Beam transforms and their IO connectors. And on top of that, users can write their codes to create a pipeline using all this stuff. So actually, what does it mean? That means that IO connector is just another Beam transform. And uh, also, IO connector is a data processing task. Our Beam already provides a, a set of different P transforms, which we can roughly split into three groups. So the first one is a map like P transform, which provides a different way how to map elements one to one. Our another group is a group by key tra like transform, so also a bunch of them. There and uh, using them, we can create our composite transform, which actually usually are your transform is. Our classical example are about word count. So here we, we have a pipeline of our four transforms. We read our data from HDFS, we um, in text format, we, we count words, we prepare data to uh, for output results, and then we write this results into HDFS as well. So as you can see, we have actually two user P transforms, and uh, we have a two another one, uh, which we is used by text IO for read and write. Uh, of course, we can expect that Beam already per provide a bunch of different IO connectors for um, for different use cases, like our different file system, messaging system, file formats, databases, uh, and so on. There are still uh, s mm, several of them in the progress, so it's a good chance actually to work on them if you need it. And uh, finally, uh, why probably you would like to write yet another IO transform if you already have many of them implemented. So the first reason could be like our big data world is uh, growing, so we still have more data storages and databases appears on the market. And unfortunately, there is no universal big data API which we can use for every storage system. So we should uh, add the support of them into Beam. Uh, we can't use a native IO connector of your favorite runner in Beam because uh, it usually does not comply perfectly with the Beam model. Uh, so it will be supported only by one runner, but we want to, to support, have support for all runners. And uh, if you run, especially for Beam, it will be more efficient actually for Beam. Uh, also, probably you want to add another feature of your for your favorite IO connector. So it could be reason as well. And uh, in enterprise world, you probably have a 
enterprise system to store your data or for some reason you don't want to share, share your, your code for public, so, but you still want to, to use Beam, so it's another reason. And the final one, I think it's quite important as well. So it's a good way of learning. So it's a good in, uh, entry point to start learn uh, how BIM works and, con and contribute to BIM. So several words about structure of BIM connectors. In general, we have uh, four main code requirements for uh, IO transform. This is our serializability, uh, your source and sync classes. Uh, could be instantiated on a different workers by runner, so then they will run it to read or write data in parallel, so they should be serializable. Immutability, all private fields should be declared as final, and uh, all variables of your collection also should be immutable. So it prevent us to have kind of some unlike side effects uh, trade safety, well, if, you're, if you're going to that your iron connector will support the dynamic work rebalancing, so we can expect that it will be run in a, a multi-threaded environment, so it should be trade safe. And testability, this is a key part as well, because uh, our, we should test properly our iron connector to avoid some potential data loss or data corruption. Well, uh, Gen generally, all connectors are presented as a wrapper around a set of different transforms. In this example, just uh, uh, I added uh, two transforms to read and to write data. The difference, as you can see, only the input and output parameter of P transform. So for read, we use a P begin and we output P collection of our elements and then uh, for write it's opposite. So we take the input P collection and we output P down, P down object. Read transform. Uh, uh, we can say that in generally uh, it incorporates two parts. The first part is a configuration part. We use a auto value, a auto multi value builder for that. So it makes our life easy to add uh, another configuration parameter for our transform. So for example, here we configure host um, and use the public methods, which will be exposed to user uh, as a part of IO API. Uh, so another, another component of this transform is the expand method, where we actually create our source. Our source could be implemented in a different way. Uh, actually, either it can be implemented by just for part two, or uh, based on a bounded and our unbounded source classes. So in the beginning, just I will show you how to implement with a bounded and bounded source classes. Uh, it's a bit more complicated. So or if you read from bounded, so, or bounded backend system, uh, we create our bounded source, uh, which um, should implement generally these three methods. First one is a split method, which uh, takes uh, desired bundle size, and then uh, based on that, it returns the list of different bound sources, which then could be instantiated on different workers and uh, used to run data in parallel. Uh, also, we can provide our to runner the value of estimated size bytes, bytes, so it should be used by runner later. And of course, for every source, we need to create a reader. So actually, the reader will be responsible for actually how to connect, how to read data from our backend system. Unbound source is a bit more complicated. Split is based on number of splits. Again, it returns the list of different unbounded sources. Uh, create reader again, so we add a, mm, another option like a checkpoint mark. I will tell you about that a little bit uh, later. And uh, we add a method that requires dedupping, so it means that if we set it to t if return true, so it means that runner should know that uh, it, it needs to exclude duplicated uh, records, so probably add another step uh, in the final pipeline.
for that. Bounded reader. Uh, four methods uh, should be implemented. Well, in start method, we usually create the instance of our client uh, library, connect to our uh, storage system. Uh, then in advance, we advance uh, actually our iterator and check if our next element exists. Uh, and in get current, we return our uh, element or doesn't return in case if it doesn't exist, we throw an exception. And in close, we just close our connection or and release our, our resources for client. Uh, unbounded reader, uh, as I mentioned, it's yes, it's a bit more complicated because actually it adds uh, two other methods uh, to return watermark, which is responsible of uh, data completeness. Uh, so, as you can see, it's also responsibility of our IO transform. And uh, checkpoint mark should be used also by runner in case of failure when we restart our pipeline. Uh, if it's supported, we avoid to rereading our, our messages and avoid our data duplication. We usually implement a check mark, checkpoint mark for every IO transform. So, what is the reason actually to use this source interface, um, bounded or unbounded? Uh, well, for unbounded, we should use it because uh, Purdue uh, does not support it. Uh, if you want to provide a progress and size estimation, we also do that. Uh, if you want to support the dynamic work rebalancing, also we should do that because Purdue doesn't support it. And uh, if uh, our runner wants if we want to split actually our uh, input into parts based on our runner desire size, we do that again. So uh, in other cases, uh, I recommend uh, to use a part do and group by key. So it should be easier. And uh, normally uh, it's just a kind of chain of three transforms like a do when we get the list of our shards or different parts where we can use them and read in parallel then we uh, uh, spread actually uh, them into different uh, workers and then in other, in other part do we read them in parallel but in some cases uh, we can't read data in parallel for example when we uh, when we have a uh, SQL storage and uh, we want to, and we uh, run a SQL query against that, or we read data from zip file. In this case, it just uh, part do where we read our data and then uh, use group by key uh, to uh, to spread uh, data for different uh, for different workers. Uh, IO structure, right. So uh, we don't have actually any sync interface for write. We just use a part do that uh, get records and write them into data store. Uh, in more complicated cases, we can use just part, part do and group by key. For example, if you want to avoid a data duplicate, or if you want to avoid the data duplication because of failures or retries. And if our sync is a file based sync, just use file a uh, file uh, IO right, so it should be enough. You don't need to implement your own sync for that. A uh, small example about write transform again. It's uh, mm, we have expand methods and uh, some uh, configuration options. Uh, in expand, we we create our writer function, and the writer function is just as you can see, just do a fan function where we have four methods for setup where we create our producer process element uh, where we add usually add a new uh, every record to some buffer buffer of bundle since we process our data in bundles and uh, in a finished bundle we just flush it uh, so it should be more efficient then we will write it all the time for every record and in tear down we just uh, close our producer but be aware that tear down uh, is, there is no guarantee that it will be called so it's like a best effort some recommendation about uh, writing our um, connector. Well, for naming, uh, very simple, just to use a suffix IO for your transform. So we'll, everybody should know that it's IO transform. And uh, use uh, verbs uh, for your factory methods to, to create actual transforms, like a read, read bytes, write. 
Uh, don't use uh, any reserved words for naming your class names. Well, it's like a transform song sync. Uh, configuration. Uh, there is a general recommendation, so we use only parameters that are really necessary to run your transform and have an output of this transform. So, well, in general, it just provides some host names or database name or topics name and so on. So don't expose a lot of tuning knobs, or so because uh, there it will be then uh, kind of mess and uh, difficult for user to properly run it. Like uh, if it's possible, of course. Sometimes it's not possible. <laughs> and uh, if your underlying library uh, also can be configured using any configuration file or configuration class, don't mirror every parameter to your. Uh, transform just provide the methods how to configure it like uh, an example from Kinesis IO we have a s dedicated method for that error handling very important so mm, the main recommendation try to detect er errors early so it should be well as left as possible in this chain of compilation creating applying and running so uh, it, sh it will avoid you to have an issue or uh, a potential data corruption and data loss. So data consistency, this is uh, our everything. So favor data c consistency above everything else. And don't try to mask data loss or corruption. And never do like this. So just catch an exception. And then lock this error into log file. And then just continue to, to process. So potentially, it could be the uh, cause of data loss. So in this case, we just sh should fail our pipeline. Compatibility, if you write a new transform, uh, should be marked there as an experimental annotation. If you update or change the API of already existing transform, just uh, deprecate these public methods with a deprecated transform, provide new API, here, and potentially after several releases, minimum three, our deprecated API could be removed. Again, don't silently change the, the behavior and transform. Don't break API. And uh, uh, our uh, users will be happy about that. Documentation. So just to explain the general purpose of your transform, provide a basic example how to, minim, minimum example how to write your transform for read and write. And uh, if it uh, contains some not evident or maybe more complicated cases, your transform, I mean, so just provide example as well. So it should be easier for users to use that. And then two words about testing. Uh, in general, we have a two, uh, two type of testing. So unit tests uh, it should verify only correctness of your business logic, how it works properly with your backend system, backend storage. And uh, uh, please use only in-memory version or fake implementation. So because all test tests should be run very quickly. And uh, use very small data sets for that. Integration test, it's a different, uh, it, it has a different purpose. So we want to catch some problems which we can only see or, at, or can happen only in a di distributed environment. So when we read or write data in parallel. So for this case, uh, we should use the actual instance of your data storage system. And the uh, user kind of small or medium uh, size of data sets for that. So. And uh, usually it's a question actually what I should use. So try to find the balance between unit tests and integration tests. So in general, all this, uh, they all together should catch the majority of all potential issues and uh, avoid uh, and avoid uh, uh, potential data loss or data corruption. So we will have a talk uh, about actually quality assurance and BIM later. I recommend you to visit this. Uh, so I think uh, the guys will be talking about testing in details. And uh, for them who really want to start write their transform and maybe to contribute them into BIM, uh, we have a mm, very good documentation. It's a bit uh, kind of spread it. Uh, so I added some links about that. And I also recommend you to watch uh, this uh, presentation from Eugen Kirpichov about uh, uh, IO, IO as well. 
So thank you for your attention and uh, any questions? All right, we are running a little bit behind schedule, but I would like to give the opportunity to ask one question. Anyone? So I, I thought it was like more and more a trend towards for IOs, certainly for I, um, towards splitable do events. So what's the thing about that? <laughs> it's a question about the splitable defend, right? Yeah. Because I, I don't hear well, actually. <laughs> the, uh, oh. Yeah, uh, well, since it's just a uh, splitable DFN, probably many of you already know, so it's kind of new way how to write a RIO transform or a connector as well. And uh, it was not included into this presentation because uh, of a lack of time. So this, as I mentioned, is just a crash course. And uh, probably uh, next time uh, I will present uh, in details about the how to write a transform for using splitable DFN. All right, thank you so much. We are going to have a short coffee break now and then we'll resume at 11. Thank you.